You look at any of, of HCI, human computer interaction, you look at all wearables, and then you look at AR and VR, there's something that's common among them, and, and it is the one word, and the word is intent. Your eyes, the fastest moving organ in your body. When was the last time you thought about what you might do with your eyes if you wanted to control something? Well, my name is Jim Margraff. I'm CEO and founder of iFluence. And today I'm here at ReadWrite to speak with Chris about how you can transform intent into action through your eyes and the implications this has for the Internet of Things. Jim, thanks for joining us. Uh, what is iFluence? So iFluence is uh, a company to help individuals transform intent into action through their eyes. Okay. So is that, that sounds VR-ish, is it in that realm? It is, it's AR and VR. If you think about uh, devices today that are AR or VR, you have what's called the input problem. And the challenge is, you've got this beautiful information presented either in front of you, you look through it, or it's all around you, but how do you interact with it, how do you control it? And this has been a problem that's been, uh, been known for some time, and today, the general approach is people use their head, move their head around and with lasers looking at something or an image right. of a laser or, or they'll speak. So it's heads, hands and voice today. And we view that as just incomplete. And eye tracking starts with the ability to, to point some imagers or cameras at your eyes and then to be able to track the features of your eye to tell how they're moving around. That's a starting point. That's technology that's been around for a couple decades. Um, the challenge though is to get that into an AR or VR headset, you've got to solve some problems. It has to be very right. small, low power, uh, has to be robust to environment, robust to users' eyelashes and mascara, but it also needs to perform a, in a way that allows users to easily interact and control what they see. And that's called eye interaction, and that's something that no one has done before. So you feel this is a very natural way of sort of doing an interface between man and machine, if you will, that's a little bit more natural and recognizable to people. It is, it is. In fact, if you look at, you look at any of, of HCI, human-computer interaction, you look at all wearables, and then you look at AR and VR, there's something that's common among them, and, and it is the one word, and the word is intent. If you look at a human, a human wants, has some idea, some intent, something they want to realize or achieve or, or cause to occur. And the question is, how do you do that? So this notion of transforming intent into action using just your eyes as a starting point is something that's pretty powerful. Now, for, for those in our audience who don't know who that AR and VR is virtual reality, augmented right. reality, which kind of gets MR, mixed reality. That's right. Uh, how do those two worlds sort of differentiate in, yeah. in, in your world with your product? Yeah, let's separate them out. Um, um, VR, which is, is the most um, prevalent, popular, uh, publicized today, is virtual reality, which means it's immersive. So it's like putting a pair of ski goggles on you, or Oculus, or Vive, and others. And once you do that, you're immersed in this environment, okay? A, an augmented reality means you're putting on a pair of glasses that, that um, will, or now, they're becoming completely transparent some of the time, and other times they might be augmented with information which is delivered into a display that's part of the glasses itself. So what you end up with is, is for instance, I'm looking at you sitting here, and I could look at you and see, oh, there's a parrot on your shoulder. And I might see that parrot sitting there in brilliant color, and in, in, a real, in a real mixed reality world, which is the next kind of level of that, I couldn't tell if that parrot, that's, by the way, you better brush it off quickly, <laughs> that parrot is actually um, live or if that parrot is, is, is virtual. And when we reach that point where we combine the physical and virtual worlds, so I look at you and I look at the parrot or someone sitting next to you and I can't tell the difference, then we've altered reality. So we've augmented reality or we've altered reality in a way that's pretty powerful. And that's interesting you mentioned that. I mean, we know about virtual reality because in the consumer press you read about uh, Oculus and Sony PlayStation coming out. But with the augmented reality and mixed reality, in industrial settings, that really comes quite powerful on factory floors, in hospital rooms. And, and that is certainly a place where your hands are doing something, that's right. where your technology becomes very important. That's correct. That's right. If you look in the U.S. right now, there's an estimated 40 million what are called um, desk-free, hands-free workers, deskless hands-free workers. So they're working away from their desk, they need to operate in a mode that's hands-free. And that might be someone climbing a pole that's looking at some electronics on the top of a telephone pole, or it might be somebody under a jet that's doing some inspection, or someone at a construction site that's looking around at the scene. They need to collect information, but they want information while they're doing their job, because right. they're looking at it, but they need assistance. And sometimes they need live assistance from someone else. Now, for us, you know, obviously we like to talk about IoT in the connected world, and we bemoan the fact that right now IoT seems to be 
putting 40 devices in your home and dropping 40 apps onto your cell phone. And, and I think our hope is we get out of that and so people start looking at alternate interfaces, whether it's voice or machine learning, or of course, augmented reality. I mean, that is the holy grail minority report, isn't it? That's right, that's right. Yeah, it's interesting you mentioned minority report because Tom Cruise is there and he's doing this beautiful orchestrated movement of his arms. Um, but if you actually attempt to do that in practice, and see how long you can hold your arms up, moving them around, it's not very long. So it looks beautiful, but um, um, that, that's an interesting comment. More generally, if you look at what's happening in the industrial IoT, and you think about devices, and as you said, 40 apps, and now we say, what's the best way to interact with this information? Let's go back to intent, right. okay? Um, it's too hot in my house, or I want to check on the, uh, my, the electricity flow or I want to interact with uh, either information or control a device. How do you do that? Well, obviously, your, your phone coming out of your pocket, navigating through screens, finding the address, way too much, right? But, but in fact, why not just look at it? So I'm sitting there, and I look at my refrigerator across the, t across the room, and I want to know what I should buy before I head out, you know, out of the grocery store. So there it is, and the display appears here because there are sensors in the refrigerator checking the, the expiration date and the quality of, of the produce in my refrigerator. Or we could take it and say, okay, now my, my thermostat's there and I want to change my thermostat, control it. Well, why not just simply be able to look at it and then right. control that again? I, we always think in terms of eyes because your eyes are right akin, they're, they're the fastest moving organ in your body, which is interesting, which means the speed at which they move approaches the speed of thought. And it's about the, as close as you can get to mind control and mind reading is, is, is possible. Now you mentioned that you're building a, a platform around these technologies. Where, where is iFluence in three years? So what we're doing is we're creating the standard for eye interaction. And what that means is, is all of the wearable devices, so again, VR, AR, MR devices, will ultimately have uh, foundationally eye tracking technology in them, and they will be enabled with eye interaction technology. So that being the case, um, what we're doing is creating that standard, and where we'll be is deploy, having deployed um, in second and then third and end generation platforms, mm -hmm. our technology, which is the I, the stack of technologies, the I interaction, te I, I tech, uh, I, I tracking technology and the I interaction technology that everyone is using in a language as common today as flick and swipe and pinch and zoom with your fingers on a phone. Absolutely. Well, thank you for taking the time with us. We really appreciate it. We always ask one last question of everyone, which is, what does IoT mean to you? <laughs> so, you know, um, so, so Internet of Things, clearly, this is devices, this is automotive, this is uh, buildings, uh, industrial locations where there are devices where we can collect information and pass information back. I might think of this as uh, maybe the biological IoT, so maybe the BioT. <laughs> and the BioT is something that relates to how this interacts with your body biologically. So when I think about it, I think about, again, wearable devices because the, the brain-eye connection that we support and enhance is kind of biology meeting technology um, for the eyes and the brain and ultimately translating that into realizing intent. Now tie that together with the Internet of Things, whether they be personal, um, consumer, commercial, social, or um, industrial. And basically I see the eye-brain connection as something that takes the IoT and expands it and, uh, and actually makes it uh, more accessible for people. Well, I'm looking forward to that world. Thank you very much for taking the time with us. Thanks, Chris. Thank <laughs> you.